Hi, so this is something that was inspired by uh, Rimstar.org. He called it his sunflower motor, and I thought it was absolutely awesome. I'm going to do a separate video on how to make this, but in order to make this, you need to do a little bit of electroplating. So I thought I'd do a separate video on electroplating, and then do another video on how to make the sunflower motor, because that's the objective of what we're doing. But I thought it'd be such a long video that we'd do electroplating first. Now, specifically, I want to do something called wand electroplating. Because wand plating actually is very much easier than bath plating. Bath plating is where you get a huge tank, you fill it full of your salts, you keep it all in balance, and you give everything a lovely coat. Uh, and it's challenging to do, but quite exciting to do, and lots of people do it, and some very nice results out of things like keepsakes. But if you're going to do one or two things where you're not going to do a huge amount and you don't have that much space, then something like wand electroplating is uh, much more approachable. Now, in wand electroplating, what you do is you connect the thing that you want to plate to the negative of your power supply, and you connect a lump of metal, a small lump of metal, to the positive, and put a sponge between the two, soak the sponge in your electroplating solution, and rub the surface of what you want to plate. So obviously you're not having a huge setup that you need to maintain and keep and use and, and pay a lot of money for these things. You're using quite small amounts and it's easy to pack away and you don't do um, a, such a challenging operation, really. So that's the point of wand electroplating. That's very popular for things like gold coating your phone. So people take an iPhone case and they give it a paint with a conductive paint get a little bit of gold, dip it in a plating solution, and then rub that on the surface of the phone, and you get a gold-plated phone. Clearly, if you're going to do your own phone, or you're going to do a couple of phones, very much cheaper than trying to set up a bath full of gold salts, which are hugely expensive. So it's very popular for doing things like that. And it's extremely useful for us for doing all kinds of things, like, for instance, the sunflower motor. It's great for battery cases because you can coat the outside of the plastic and that becomes one of your terminals. So it's very, very useful. Now, in order to do the sunflower motor, what I'm going to need to do is coat a bit of this plastic. And this is our uh, HDPE, high density polyethylene. It's filled with a conductive material, and so it's conductive. Now, it's not super, super conductive. It's about 100 ohms per square across the surface. So from here to here is about 100 ohms. And that's not a lot, but it's enough to make it a bit difficult. But if I just clip something on here, and I want to plate here, it'll be quite difficult. I have to begin plating here and go out in that direction. So you can do it, but the crocodile clip obviously would wear that bit, and you'll get a little bit of a mess out of it, really. So what I tend to do is give it a ground plate that I plate on, because then the current across the ground plate is nice and even. And I just use a bit of kitchen foil. Now to lay my, down my kitchen foil, and connect that to my negative. Then I have a nice plate where I get an even current density across the surface of that, pop that on, and now all I have to do is rub my metal across there, and it's nice and even and much, much easier. You'll notice I'm wearing gloves. I'm actually wearing gloves for a couple of reasons. One is I don't want to get grease on the surface, because if you touch this with your fingertips and you come to plate it, you get little areas where you've touched it that won't plate properly. You can get them to plate by rubbing them hard, but it won't plate properly and it makes a bit more of a job out of it. So the first thing to do with this material is clean it. Now it's really easy to clean, just use a bit of isopropanol alcohol to remove any grease from your fingertips. The second reason is I'm going to handle the wand and there's a charge through that. I don't want to give myself a shock accidentally. And the third reason is it's soaked in chemicals, and although it's fairly harmless, I don't actually want to soak my hands in chemicals for long periods of time. Whatever those chemicals are, I wouldn't put them in the dishwasher. I wouldn't wash my dishes without them for hours on end. So, I'm wearing gloves for that reason. There we go, rub it over with a bit of isopropanol alcohol, and we're ready to go. Now, whenever you do something like this, the metal that you plate affects the plating solution that you've got. And we've come up with this thing. It's a bright zinc wand plating solution, and to be honest, it's absolutely awesome. It plates zinc nice and bright extraordinarily quickly, so it's really awesome. Now, we do have that in the shop for sale. You don't use that much of it. 
Uh, and please do go to the shop and buy some of this stuff if you're going to do this, because obviously shop sales is how we run the videos. The next thing you want is something between the metal that you're going to rub on the surface and the surface that you're rubbing. You can't put the metal straight on, it'll be a short. And there will be no way of um, holding the electrolyte. So we just get a strip of cloth because that is going to be what we put the electrolyte on and it's going to separate the metal from the plating surface so that it plates nice and evenly and doesn't short through. We're going to set that to 5 volts. Now it will go extraordinarily high actually, you take this up as far as 20 volts, no worries at all. But I'm going to put it at 5 volts, we'll see what happens. If it needs uh, more voltage, we'll apply more voltage. Now I'm going to um, zinc plate this because it zinc plates beautifully, brightly and quickly. So I've got my HDPE, I've got my solution and I've got my square of zinc. Now we also sell the zinc squares on the shop if you're wondering where to get hold of some zinc. Or you can go to a boat store and buy yourself a zinc sacrificial anode. There's plenty of places to get the zinc. The zinc gets connected to the positive. So we connect that up to the positive. Now, <coughs> we can use a nice actual wand. Make yourself a strip of wood, a little bit of a curl on it, buy a pen, a pad, something like that. All I'm doing is wrapping that around my finger, and that is my wand, if you like, that I'm going to electroplate with. So I'm pretty much ready to go. Not a lot of equipment required here. And we take our zinc plating solution and wet the cloth with it. It doesn't matter if you spill some on there. Wet the cloth with it. Put it onto your zinc. Wrap it around your finger. And we are ready to go. Quite literally, that's all there is to it. And now I'm going to electroplate. It. It's connected up to its power supply. The power supply is at 5 volts. And as I apply that, you will see almost immediately the zinc starts getting to be deposited. So it goes from black to a light grey. And we just keep on doing that until we've covered the surface of it. And as I say, it's quite quick. I've got this at 5 volts. I'm going to make it quicker by putting it up to 10 volts. If the voltage gets too high, this will start to get warm and you'll feel it, I assure you. So don't put the voltage too high. You want it high enough so that the result is relatively quick, but low enough so that the um, wand that's actually in your hand doesn't get too hot. And you can see immediately that has started to plate. So what I'm going to do now is plate the rest of this. And when it's done, I'll get back to you. Okay, so what you get after about 15 minutes of constant rubbing like that is this, which is a metallized piece of high density polyethylene that is conductive. Now, it's unusual to do something like that using wand plating. Like I say, mostly you do things like phones or smaller areas, but you can do these large areas like that. And we're going to use that in a machine later on, uh, but I wanted to show you what wand plating was all about. I didn't want to do it in that under, uh, other video. But wand plating is super, super easy, and it requires very little in the way of equipment to get a really nice job on something. And for us, when we're investigating stuff, it's tremendously useful for applying thin films that you would otherwise have to have va vacuum deposited, and you can't, I can't afford to do that. So this is a way of putting an adherent metal film onto a surface, but it's also a way of wand plating if you want to try wand plating other things. Now this is a zinc coating and I'll get that lovely bright zinc so easily. We have this bright zinc wand plating solution that's on sale at the shop and I'll put that in the description. So if you want to try your hand at wand plating by all means do and we're doing it with zinc. So there's some zinc metal and essential the electroplating solution. And then we've wand plated our HDPE for our sunlight motor. Anyway, I hope that was of interest to you and thank you very much for watching.